Hey everyone, PlayStation Paradise here, but you can call me Jay. I haven't covered too many original PlayStation games here on the channel, so I thought a good place to start would be every PlayStation game, beginning in alphabetical order. To preface this video, I'll be looking at games released in North America. Sorry Europeans. To be honest, I've never been there, and I'm not even convinced it's real. You're trying to tell me Scotland is a real place? Yeah, okay. So with that out of the way, grab a drink, settle in, and let's get started with game number one. 007 The World Is Not Enough is a first-person movie tie-in game that received mixed reviews. You play as Jeff. Nah, just messing with you. You play as Bond. James Bond. As you complete missions following the movie's plot. One of the more interesting aspects of the game is that it's not as combat-heavy as most shooters at the time. The first level is actually kind of a stealth level, which I botched immediately. To help you out are gadgets given to you by Q, played by John Cleese. The game uses a Pierce Brosnan impersonator, but even the film's actors who did voices for the game didn't do a great job. The entire game sounds off, but it's amazing compared to another game we'll get to in a bit. Anyway, the combat is also pretty bad. The controls are floaty, which makes it tough to aim at enemies, even with the generous auto-aim. It's important to keep in mind, Medal of Honor came out two years prior, was easy to control, and even incentivized you to shoot enemies in different spots. You can aim for the head here, but it's much better just to aim for the center mass. Even on the easiest difficulty, this game can be pretty tough so you don't got a lot of wiggle room to mess with the combat. It doesn't help that enemies are copy-pasted. Also, their death animations are recycled, so yeah, be prepared for that. It's not all bad, just most of it. It also does this thing where instead of cutscenes, you get clips from the movie, which is just lazy. If I wanted to watch the movie, I'd watch the movie. Also, the clips aren't used in a way to tell a story. The game doesn't have a story. It has a bunch of random set pieces that only vaguely follow the movie, which would be okay if the gameplay was great, but it's below average at best. The world is not enough? More like, this game is not enough. Uh, this game's gonna be a hard pass for me. I'd only pick it up if you're a 007 fan with kleptomania. Double O Seven: Tomorrow Never Dies was released a year before the previous Bond game, but it's a third-person shooter. You play as James Bond. Why am I saying who you play as? Of course you play as Bond. It's a 007 game. Who else would you play as? It follows the same mission structure as The World Is Not Enough, and you can tell they recycled a lot. It does play pretty differently though, thanks to the perspective change. Unfortunately, it also shares the bad parts too. It's basically a bad siphon filter, or you could say Siphon Filter 3. Siphon Filter 3 being bad aside, I did enjoy this game more than Tomorrow Never Dies. I think it's partly because I'm biased towards preferring third-person shooters, but it just felt a bit better to control. It also gives you proper mission briefings before every level. It just overall feels like more of a proper video game than a quick cash grab. Even the game's opening is a unique trailer made specifically for this game. You can actually see the effort that went into it. There is a free camera you can use if you don't want to follow where you're looking. But, uh, where? Oh, oh geez. Oh gosh. Oh no. The levels can vary a bit, like the first is a pretty generic combat section, but it ends with you bombing a radar dish and then a skiing section. The skiing is bad, but at least it's trying to mix it up. Some missions task you with taking pictures, and it's just nice to see variety. It's not even a bad looking game. I like it more than The World Is Not Enough, but eh. Like World, I'd give it a pass. If you want a great 007 game, stick with Nightfire or Everything or Nothing on the PS2. Double O Seven Racing is from the developers of Ride to Hell Retribution, and you're not gonna believe this, but it actually bucks the trend of bad Bond games. Also, it doesn't really feature Bond much at all, but rather the various luxury cars he uses. It's a spin-off not tied to any of the films, so it can do its own thing. It's got its own storyline, characters from the films, original levels, and is just a decent time. As you can see, it's a vehicle combat game, 
Best to think of it like a single player twisted metal, with levels that progress along a path rather than arenas. It's called racing, but you don't really race in it, funny enough. But using the Bond IP for a vehicle combat game is a great idea. You can pick up shields that show up on your car, rockets, machine guns, stinger missiles for taking out helicopters, oil slicks. It's a bit silly while still fitting the universe. And unlike the previous games, it controls great too. This isn't some cheap twisted metal clone. It's similar while still doing its own thing and doing a great job at it. You pick up power-ups just like in Twisted Metal, but instead of kill all the other cars, you have specific objectives to keep track of. The second level has you dumping your car into the ocean because of a car bomb planted in it. There's no combat involved at all, but it's still engaging because you're on a short time limit. And the level's short enough not to overstay its welcome. Now, maybe my expectations are low because of the prior games, but I had a lot of fun with this one. Graphically, it looks great too, even though I found a hilarious mishap. So in the New York City level, you got the Twin Towers in the background, but wait a minute, there they are again. The skybox is just the Twin Towers repeated. Anyway, after finishing a level, it'll play back a replay using cinematic camera angles. It's not necessary, of course, but little touches like this are so nice. They show effort. And even if you fail, they'll give you a replay so you can watch yourself killing the NPC you were supposed to protect. But my favorite part was fighting these union workers. I ended up being no match for their collective bargaining skills, and they're all forklift certified. And that's 007 Racing, my first recommendation so far. If you're a Bond fan, or even a vehicle combat fan, I think it's a hidden gem. Driving here is not like England. People aren't so polite. 16 Tales isn't a game, but alas, here we are. It's actually a collection of Native American stories told via narration and drawings. And like most edutainment, it sucks. The actual content is great. The stories are perfect for kids, and the narration is pleasant to listen to, and there's a few different speakers who all do a great job with voices and bringing these stories to life. I even like the little details, like the camera zooming in and out and panning across the drawings. You also got a volume slider, a timer for how long the video is, fast forward and rewind. So. What's the problem? Well, for one, the audio quality sucks. However they recorded this, they did a terrible job. VHS tapes had better quality audio, and this is the PlayStation, a console famous for its CD quality audio. The PlayStation was famous for being the best sounding game console at the time by miles. So what's the deal? Not only the audio, but also the video. It's full of artifacts. Artifacts are chunky pixels that occur with low bit rates or errors when compressing video. The PlayStation could do pretty good video, same as audio, and a CD should have more than enough space for the content here, so I'm not sure what's up. It leads me to believe it's all been compressed to hell and back. It does the tales here a disservice, which is a shame. Also, it's 2024, and there's much better documentaries and shows about Native American culture and history out there. So, let's move on. Customs and beliefs of the Indians had a story or a legend behind them. One extreme is trash. Listen, I know I'm being really negative, but it ain't my fault. It's a sprite-based racing game akin to Road Rash, if Road Rash wasn't amazing and tons of fun, which it is. Also, Road Rash came out like four years earlier and on the Sega Genesis. Meanwhile, One Extreme came out on the PlayStation, so yeah, there's that. You start off by choosing an athlete, and they all have different stats. Then you partake in various races around the world. But what's interesting is that you can choose between racing on a mountain bike, inline skates, a skateboard, or with a street luge board. Street, street luge? Lunge? 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 Is it lunge? I think it's lunge. Anyway, you'll face off against other racers in a mishmash. Sometimes they're on bikes, sometimes skateboards. It's pretty cool. It makes me crave an arcadey, EA Big style racing game. It kind of reminds me of MotorStorm, a chaotic event where all the people are in cars, bikes, monster trucks. I appreciate the madness. This game's too serious for that though. So you hold X to accelerate, hold circle to coast, and you can smack anyone who gets too close to you. While racing, you can go through gates for extra points. You'll also run into obstacles a lot. 
Nothing's more fun than being in first place, only to smack into an obstacle, end up in ninth place, and fail the race. Of course I'm being sarcastic, because fuck this game. It's ugly, it controls like ass, it has very few mechanics, and there's really nothing redeeming about it. Go play Road Rash, or even better, Downhill Domination on the PS2. Hard pass. Too Extreme also sucks, and I owned it as a kid. I don't remember how. I might have lost a bet. Anyway, I will give credit where it's due. It is better than One Extreme. And I like how in the main menu, it has you in like a skating bowl. Pool? What are these things called? <laughs> it's been so long. Anyway, like before, you choose your guy or gal, and this time you can change your stats. Although it's still sprite-based, it does look better and has more going on. The sprites have far more animation frames, which makes the game overall a lot smoother. There's also a ton of objectives in the environments, and it's a much more stimulating game overall. You also get a new stamina bar and Mario Kart-esque power-ups. You can grab a speed boost, a health boost to keep you from falling over, and a high jump. It's still too serious for my taste, but it is something. A big negative for me is that now your sport is locked to the track. So if you're racing in Africa, everyone's on a mountain bike. No more chaos. They also added snowboarding, which was the most fun I had. But even then, meh. Also, they added a lot more obstacles, which is really annoying. Except for these elephants. These guys are cool. Again, hard pass. Three Extreme swaps out the sprites for some proper 3D models. The environments are almost exclusively 3D objects, which looks a lot nicer. Unfortunately, the gameplay still sucks. They did add a decent trick system this time around. It's a much more arcadey game, which is a welcome change. Though it is stuffed full of real-world advertisements. Anyone else craving a Slim Jim? You can spend money on better equipment, but it all feels so lifeless. That's the adjective that describes the entire X Extreme series. It's so depressing to play. It feels like a university student's prototype for a game or a side project or something. There's not many games that I find genuinely painful to play. I've played most of the Assassin's Creed games, so my tolerance for crap is extremely high. But yeah, these X Extreme games, they, they test me. I gotta give the third and final game another hard pass. There's so many better racing games on the PlayStation, and if you want some hidden gem racers, why not check out the amazing Jet Moto series, Sledstorm, or even NASCAR Rumble. So again, skip this one. Actually, you know what? Skip the entire X Extreme series. This series just is bad all around. 2002 FIFA World Cup is a soccer game, believe it or not, and I'll be in the cold ground before I ever refer to it as football. I've never been a sports fan, so it's tough for me to give it a proper look. I get the sense there are better football- God damn it! I get the sense there are better soccer games on the PlayStation, and nothing stuck out to me as overly good, bad, or otherwise noteworthy. The most interesting thing is the ability to change the game's speed. Putting it on the highest value makes the game run at a breakneck pace, so you can reach that exciting 0-0 finale that much faster. So again, I think I'd give this one a pass. It just doesn't really have anything going on. Needs a good cross here. 3D Baseball follows the FIFA World Cup. It seems like a standard baseball game, with its most interesting addition being a toggle for its commentator, Van Earl Wright. And like every baseball game, batting is more fun than pitching. Though I did have some enjoyment hitting the batters intentionally. Thinking about it now, I might just omit sports titles from future videos, but let me know your thoughts. Should I include sports games or not? A line shot to center. They got him. Next up is 3D Lemmings. I know even less about the Lemming series than I do sports, but it does blow my mind that this series is still chugging along. So how the game works is that your Lemmings will continue progressing along a track, and it's up to you to assign them different skills to progress to the ending, saving as many as possible for more points. I think the latest game was released back in 2018, so maybe the series is done for good, but I think the spirit lives on in games like Polybridge. 
I'm not the target audience, and I dislike puzzle games as much as I do sports games, so there you go. I'm sorry to have done the game dirty to any Lemmings fans, but playing on the PlayStation has made me want to walk off a cliff. So do I recommend it? Uh, I don't know, I'm not really into Lemmings games. I don't like puzzle games either, so I, I don't know, you, you decide. Does it look fun? Last but not least is 40 Winks, an action platformer where you choose to play as either Rough or Tumble, two siblings who must save the Winks. What the fuck's a Wink? Well, they're little dudes that help humanity have good dreams. A grumpy old man called Nightcap has captured them, so it's up to you to save them. The game's opening is explained via a really well done cutscene, but I knew right away this reeks of European. You can just tell, and sure enough, who's the developer? Eurocom. Eurocom. It's right there in the name. I'm poking some fun, but this game actually really did surprise me. It plays great, has solid pacing, an interesting premise, and oozes atmosphere. You have a bunch of different collectibles to, well, collect. It's part Super Mario 3D, part Banjo-Kazooie, and maybe a little Kirby. There are some power-ups you can collect that grant you powers, like turning into a caveman, and you'll do some backtracking once you collect enough keys in a level. It plays great, has solid production values, and if you're itching for a collect-a-thon game you haven't played before, I'd pick it up. Interestingly, the game also got a Steam release just a few years ago. I haven't tried it, but the reviews are positive, so I'm assuming it runs well. Originally, it was supposed to get a Nintendo 64 port. That ended up being canned, until six years ago, when a successful Kickstarter brought that Nintendo 64 port back into reality. It looks like that port was finished at the time, just never released. It's an interesting piece of gaming history. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I actually would. I'm not really into platformers, but I was really surprised by it. I can't really complain too much, and I gotta admit, it's got a lot of quality to it. So there you go, today we took a look at 11 PlayStation games, all beginning with a number in their title. Here's the games I'd give a recommendation to pick up, and here's the maybes, I'll put a big asterisk next to them, and here's the games I'd give a hard pass on. I think most of the games we took a look at were pretty bad, but I think in future videos we'll get a mix of quality. So next time, we'll start going through every game beginning with an A. Anyway, thanks for watching, see ya.